Okay, so what year? What what graduating oh, class? Okay, so eighty four. I graduated high school in eighty four. Oh, okay. All right, and yeah. you were in what city? I was in a lovely Brooklyn, New York. Where it, all, where it all begins for so many people. Lovely Brooklyn. Before it was cool. Right. Now it actually is lovely. Yeah. Now it is lovely. When I was there, it wasn't as lovely. Holy cow. So you were an actual sweat hog? Is that what's happening? I was a sweat hog, Mr. Carter. I would have my hand up going, ooh, ooh, ooh. No, so I was, I, yeah, unfortunately, I was more like Horse Shack than like Vinnie Barbarino. But yes, <laughs> I was, uh, I was, I uh, was one of the original sweat hogs. And you, you know, you'd always pass that sign on the Belt Parkway, which says, Welcome to Brooklyn. And it was always like, Oh, we welcome back, Cotter. This is cool. <laughs> Wasn't that cool? But, you know, it felt that way. In fact, where I went to high school, I went to Edward Murrow High School. And next to it, besides the Q train running next to our classrooms, the elevated train, there was also where they filmed the Cosby show which was my first brush with Hollywood. I was, it was very cool growing up in high school and like knowing that right across and, and a bunch of people from school did internships there. And, uh, and it was like, Oh, they're filming the biggest show on TV. But you know, look now, now we talk about Cosby, but at the time it was like really cool. It was like, Oh my God, the number one show must see TV Cosby show. And it was like right outside the door of the high school. It was, it was very cool. Amazing. And the refreshments were amazing. We just loved it. What? The refresh never mind. I the refreshments. Was... Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Speaking over to second. craft services, is that what you're yeah, talking I'm about? Sure, the craft services. You never know what's gonna come in that. I'm but, gonna uh... that will be edited out, so I just have <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so that was your entrance into into this uh, Hollywood this world called show. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you're you're a sci fi guy. Yes and no. I mean, yeah, you know, to to a certain extent. I mean, my for a long time I was I was a journalist and then I did my first movie which was a romantic comedy about these two sci-fi fans who meet their idol William Shatner and find out he's more screwed up than they are called Free Enterprise. And you know, I kind of had that experience making the movie. Got to meet, hang out with William Shatner, find out he's more screwed up than I was in a delightful way. Because Bill is fantastic. And I love Bill. But um and and uh, Eric McCormick, we we cast Eric McCormick right before he got Will and Grace, and um, that was that was my first film. And I did movies for a while until I realized you can't make any money in movies. And uh, I ended up, you know, sort of moving to television, where I show ran and did a bunch of different TV shows. And during this pandemic of ours, this this heart, you know, pandemic, I was like, nothing was in production. I could we weren't shooting. It was just like I was sitting at home going crazy. And I'd always been obsessed with 1982, the greatest geek year ever, right? And and I thought this is something. This could be my pandemic project, right? I can do this. I, you know, we we can be in the studio. We can all wear our masks. It's it's it's. Uh, it, this is a great thing to do. And it just took on a life of its own. It became this this huge thing. We interviewed over a hundred people, right? You know, stars, directors, producers, writers, critics, studio executives, people like me who have interesting opinions, hopefully about. Um, uh, 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 insights into these films. And uh, it was really the end of um, a long road for me because I had, I guess years ago, pro, I didn't even remember this until somebody reminded me. I had curated a uh, 1982 film festival at the American Cinematheque um, where we showed a bunch of films. And, and, and because I'd really been trying to make 1982 happen for a long time in terms of just convincing people what an, a stellar banner year it was for movies. And, um, and people were really... Uh, and 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 that was great and and we would sell out every night and i'm like so i knew there was something to it and i written a couple of articles like for the 30th anniversary like oh 1982 greatest geek year ever so it just seemed like a natural progression and what i i we really focus in in, in the documentary series we really focus on the movies but it's a remarkable year for music and TV. I mean, like Prince's 1999 came out that year. Everybody talks about Thriller, which is great, but 1999 came out that year. I mean, Rio came out from Duran Duran. I mean, Nebraska from Springsteen and Avalon from Roxy Music and, you know, the Joan Jett, I Love Rock and Roll and Asia's self-titled, the original supergroup, you know, came out that year and Billy Joel, Nylon Curtain. It was like, it was, so it was a really great year for music. And then for television, it was insane. But St. Elsewhere premiered and Cheers and Family Ties, and Remington Steel, and T.J. Hooker, of course, you know, because got to have Shatner in there, and Tales of the Good, the Gold Monkey, and Square Pegs, and it's just like, and, and fame, you know, as a TV series, so it was like this amazing year across the board, and I had, you know, 
huge aspirations. We're going to cover it all. We're going to do it all. It was very clear to me when we had hundreds of hours, it was like, I got to focus. It got to be movies. Otherwise, this thing is going to be, you know, it's just going to go on from years. And it's like, it's going to be the 50th anniversary of 1982. And I'm like, I'm hope I'm here for that. So I said, we're just going to focus on movies. And we sort of jettisoned the TV and the books and the all the other stuff. We do touch on video games because it was the year ColecoVision and television came out. So we had to, right? But um but uh, it, it, we mostly focus on the movies, and even then, it's 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 crazy. You know, it's it's four hours of, um, of of all this, and we could have done more. I mean, there's there's a bunch of movies I feel bad that we don't really even touch on, like Pink Floyd's The Wall, which was a, a Alan Parker movie that came out that year, and one of the bigger. You know, we don't really get into the crazy reevaluation of Grease Two. You know, which now suddenly went from being this clunker to like has this crazy cult following. So, I mean, there were a bunch of stuff and that, you know, we ended up, uh, you know, uh, not being able to do because, you know, when it's the year that gave you E.T. and Star Trek Two and Blade Runner and all this stuff, it's like you kind of got to focus on that. And so if, you know, one from the heart gets lost in the in the shuffle, you know, who's really going to complain? There's always going to be somebody on Twitter who's going to complain. But, you know, for the most part, I think we we did a good job of not only covering the 10 ton gorillas but some of the um more esoteric stuff as 